Glover is one of those N64 games I had as a Wii lad. I played it a lot and was terrible at it. I didn't even really like it, but you know, when you're a kid, you play games you don't even like. At the young age of 5 or 6, I found the controls to be incredibly clunky, and it was just way too difficult for my peanut brain. 20 or so years later, I still don't really like it. And, and my peanut brain still can't handle it. Glover is a game where you play as Glover, a four-fingered glove who's a companion to a wizard who accidentally turned themselves into a statue while brewing an evil potion. As Glover, you need to gather seven Chaos Emeralds to de-stonify your wizard pal and stop cross-stitch. Another assistant to the wizard, except they turned evil through the potion's chemicals. Glover has to travel through six sprawling worlds to gather each crystal. Atlantis, a circus, Treasure Trove Cove, the land before time, Bowser's Castle, and finally, the one, one place that, that hasn't been, been corrupted, corrupted by capitalism. capitalism. Space! And Glover must get the crystal from each world and escort said crystal, which is now a ball, through every single obstacle, in every single level, and through the boss. It's a neat idea, but it sure as hell wasn't fun to play in the 1990s, and it sure as hell isn't fun to play in the not 1990s. I didn't plan on reviewing this game for a long time. I was putting it off because of how much I disliked it as a kid. But then, I was streaming BDSP, struggling to catch a Houndoom, and I said to my chat, Hey Houndoom, if you get in the ball, I'll stream Glover next. Wait, break out! Break out! No! 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 <laughs> so I streamed it. Oh, this game sucks. Okay. And now I have finished it, and I'm glad I finished it. It took me roughly 25 years to beat Glover, but I did it with cheats. Catch me on twitch.tv slash mamodxx. I sometimes play N64 games there. It's cool. So here's how it went down. I started the game with an open mind, and that lasted about 10 seconds, because the tutorial level sucks. I struggled at the tutorial level a lot, and it was just all downhill from there. I remembered how awful controlling the actual game felt, stiff turning, slow movement, wonky physics, questionable design choices like how moving the ball around on the ground, the controls are normal, you know, not inverted, but the second you stand on your ball, the controls become inverted. Sure, fine. 90s 3D platformers were known for their jank. The transition to 3D wasn't just rough for one particular blue hedgehog, but the entire game industry as well, save for a few exceptions. 98, maybe 99% of N64 games are not good. So yes, Glover falls into the crowd of messy, 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 messy platformers who felt decent in the 90s, but feel abysmal today. And it was the N64, so you know what that means. You know what Glover has to be. That's right, Glover has to be a collectathon because that was that was the hot pie everybody wanted. That collectathon game. In the game, there are collectible cards called Garibs which is a word I had never heard of before, so I googled it and could only find a translation from a language that means poor in English. Okay, but after digging deeper, I found out it was revealed in a recent interview that the word came up from an in-office joke. Sure. I mean, it works. You don't need to name them anything that people know. It's fine. It's a fantasy game. There's a walking glove. I can't be mad about cards being named Garib. Anyway, the player can collect these cards to unlock bonus stages in each world, which I didn't try because collecting all these cards in a single world did not seem like a fun time. But I did watch footage of the bonus stages online. Surely, because I watched it online, I'm allowed to have an opinion on Glover bonus stages, right? I think that's how that works. When I started World 1, which is Atlantis, I had the time of my life. I might be playing it- WHERE? WHAT? WHO? Can I kill the fish? 
God damn it, the fish is gonna kill me. And after spending nearly two and a half-ish hours on World 1 and 2, I busted out the cheat codes. Thank God for 90s games having cheat codes aplenty. I slapped on the infinite lives and recall ball cheats. This helped me not have to deal with the annoying game overs and allowed me to play the game like a normal platformer without worrying about that stupid ball. And outside of an annoying monkey fight, I barely struggled with the rest of the game. Maybe don't use the bowling ball, but how am I supposed to hurt the monkeys if I don't have a bowling ball? Why are you in my... I just got spawn killed! And you know what? Because of these cheats, I was having a genuinely okay time. I didn't have to worry about the finicky controls and physics as much. I didn't have to focus on carrying a ball with me at all times. I would just recall it whenever I needed it to progress. It opened my eyes and made me realize that there is a pretty well-designed platformer in here, but it's plagued by an awkward game design choice. The ball. I commend Glover for trying to stand out in the sea of 3D collectathons in the 90s by introducing the ball mechanic. And honestly, this game likely wouldn't be remembered without the ball. It wouldn't be talked about. It wouldn't have a cult following. So here's a nice clap to the developers. Just one clap, because the ball mechanics still suck ass. If Glover were made today with modern mechanics and tools, I think it'd be much more well received than it was in the 90s. It's an exciting idea that was arguably ahead of its time. It's a shame the developer, Interactive Studios, is no longer around because Glover was brimming with potential. The studio ended up being combined into a bigger one and forced to make almost entirely shovelware games until their closure in 2013. The one exception is Epic Mickey 2, which I have heard pretty good things about. So ultimately, Glover is an okay game, with cheats on, but a pretty rubbish one when you're playing the games as the developers intended. I'm being lenient and giving Glover a 4 out of 10, because I can recognize the creativity in the game. There are some really cool ideas, and I think Glover just came out at the wrong time, and was made at the wrong time. Because with modern technology, modern physics, more platformers, more experience in the industry, Glover could have been incredible. But you know, there may be some die-hard Glover lovers who will look at my review and say, You used cheats, you didn't actually beat the game. And to respond to that, I say, if I hadn't used cheats, I would have loathed this game and spent way more time on it, hating it. But because of cheating, I enjoyed this game a fair amount and was able to recognize its potential. I suppose at the end of the day, this game isn't as bad as Kid Me thought it was. But I also just can't believe I'm being so lenient on fucking Glover right now. I feel like when Glover makes its uh, triumphant comeback in 2026, they should collab with Glove World. This game sucks. Sorry, what's happened? Oh, okay, yeah. Alright, Glover script, I can't believe this is happening.